So a few months ago, Winchester reached out about doing a project together. And right now I'm at the Scholastic Clay Target Program Youth Nationals in Columbus, Ohio. And this project's badass. You guys are gonna love this one. Pull. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do on this build is build the carcass. And of course I have the plywood literally on the bottom of a pile of MDF. Always. But before we get into that, I wanna thank this week's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. Sam's been screaming at me a lot lately because he's finding me playing Raid probably way more often than I should be. But Raid's a lot of fun. It's an RPG turn-based game where you can battle against other bosses and players. My favorite game mode is arena mode. You can fight PVP battles against other players, get weekly rewards, increase your champion's attributes, and climb the arena ranking. I've got a link down in the description if you want to download it. And by the time that you're watching this video, the brand new team arena should be available and live in the game. The tag arena is the new level of PVP competition, where in the traditional classic arena, it was four versus four, and now it's multiple teams of four versus four. I think three teams in total, and the best of the three wins the campaign. It's like their traditional arena, but on hard mode. If you're like me and you truly like competition in all aspects of life, but definitely in your video games, the PVP is a awesome option. It has some big rewards that you're really gonna love. And you can find me in the game under the name Big Malek. And because Raid is awesome, if you download using my link below, they're gonna give you 1,000, no, 100,000 silvers as well as a free champion the hex weaver and since it's brand new the developer is going to be giving away some awesome rewards for anyone that's ranking highly which is amazing so whatever you're doing stop go ahead click that link down below and download raid now let's actually go build something all right so for this project we're going to be using some northeastern cherry that was air dried so it's got a nice red hue to it. We're gonna do a little standing on it, but I need to mill it down so it's pretty first. So let's get to it. All right, friends. So we're gonna put this carcass together. Should be fairly simple. We're using brad nails and face counter countersunk. Face screws on this. I have no fans on, so my audio is good. So all of you audio files out there that like to bitch about how shitty my audio is, I just want you to know. I may die of a heat stroke in here just to appease the audio files. All right, so the external carcass is done. Now I just gotta put these interior panels on so we can mount the drawers in the center there. Instead of pocket holding everything together, you guys notice I was using pins and face screws, my preferred method, because it takes forever to cut the pocket holes. The other part is I'm gonna cut some notches in these so everything slides in, fits nice and square, and then I'll do the same thing. Glue, pin, screws, for reinforcement, and the carcass will be done. All right, so we've got carcass built. I've got all the panels glued up. That's gonna be the, the fascia. That be the word? No. Yeah? Fascia? Fascia. Yeah. Now we need to focus on the top, which is gonna be uh, a concrete top, which means we need a melamine form. My favorite. Let's get to it. All right, this is a pretty basic mold. If you guys are looking to actually do any of this stuff yourself, check out my buddy, Mike Clifford at The Mud Industrial Maker. He is a uh, concrete connoisseur. He's done way more of this, and he's my go-to resource for all things concrete. So don't ask me any questions. So all the caulking on the mold's dry. We've got this thing leveled in both directions. Now for the most satisfying part of any concrete project, the peel of the extra silicone. So 
Sam, put down your job and grab the 500 pounds of concrete. I'm kidding. We're going to mix some concrete. We're going to do it outside so we don't make a huge mess in here. Uh, and then we're going to pour this countertop. Cross our fingers it doesn't crack, break, split, or anything. Fortunately, concrete's pretty affordable. So if it does, we should have some time to redo it. And then I might have to call some people for some help. Like Mike Clifford. Get your phone ready. I might be calling. So welcome to the new part of the shop where you can see we've got Miss Piggy, my new CNC. And we're super stoked. This will be actually the first project we'd run on it. We're going to do a huge W for Winchester on the wall behind the, uh, the counter. And we're obviously going to do it out of epoxy. So we need to cut a custom mold. So we got the W's popped out, now we need, well, cut out. Now we gotta pop this one out and then we're gonna mount these together for the mold. This is a first. It should work, I think, in theory. All right, we'll see. Boop. You gotta love when you make good tabs. I make shitty tabs. We're all put together, it's actually pretty sweet. In order to keep the epoxy from seeping into the MDF, we now need to line the interior with Tyvek tape. And now thinking back on it, I should have just bought plastic or something. Live and learn. All right, kiddos, so the mold is prepped, caulking's dry. Fingers crossed this thing's tight because if not, it is going to ruin the floor. We're up in the office to control the temperature. Uh, we have an AC unit up here. Last pour we did down in the shop was that waterfall table that exploded. We don't want that on this, so we're gonna try to control the temperature as much as we can. We're going with a red tint on this guy, which is a little different than what we normally do. So this should be pretty cool. Let's get to it. Go figure, the one rule for epoxy is don't get it in your eye. I take my glasses off because I'm hot and sweaty. It splashes right in my eye. So go buy yourself a pair of these. They're linked down below and literally never take them off. Now let's finish this one. All right, bear with me kids. It's extremely warm in here. My boobies might fall out of my shirt because we're going with the button life. Yeah. Timberland Pro's got new shirts, which means John's gonna be three quarters nude. But we've also got the fans blaring. All of you audiophiles that like to give me shit because my audio sucks. We have an excuse this time. It's not just me breaking shit. So what we're gonna do now is put this cabinet carcass together. We're gonna get these side panels installed and then this back plate, we're gonna have to allow for some expansion and contraction. So we're gonna cut some expansion joints and then we'll start working on the face frame for the front.
So to mount these face frames, we're going to use biscuits. We're going to use a little bit of a sliding biscuit joint. That way I don't have to mock this thing up and do any alignment. All right, kids, now for the fun part of this project. We are going to make two full scale, or two 40 inch tall shotgun shells. I got some plates for the bottom, cut on the CNC down the street. Now we need to make the, the bottom here. So what I'm, gonna, what I'm thinking is we've got these strips of four inch, 16 gauge steel. I'm just gonna try to make a circle and weld it on there. If that doesn't work, we'll, we'll tack it and beat it into place. So I made a little jig. Now we're going to see if I can bend this to the radius that I want. And our goal here is to get it close because I think I can kind of beat it into place. I don't know. I don't know. What do you I don't f***ing know anything. I would love to not be filming, so, but the ass clownery is what the people want. On the front of this desk, what we're gonna be doing is replicating the bottom of the shotgun shell. In order to do so, we had the lettering and such cut out on the plasma. Now I'm gonna weld this donut to give that, uh, the letters in the shell are depressed. We can't do that with eight, eight, eight inch steel. So I'm gonna weld a donut on the back. I should give some backing to all of our letters. Beautiful. So when they cut it, I had them keep all of the in, instead of making it look like a stencil cut where you like hold the A on with a tab, what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna punch a hole. It's called a, uh, maybe plunge, plunge, I don't know. I'm just gonna weld it from behind. Plug, I think it's called a plug. I'm glad I put all that work in. Yeah, that'll look sweet. So for these super awesome shotgun shells that are gonna go on either side, we couldn't quite get that sheet metal to work. So John's going out to find some other options. So while John's out sourcing some new materials for those shotgun shells, you're stuck with me and we're gonna go ahead and make some drawers for this thing. So Sam and our new guy, Jordan, uh, shop apprentice, welcome to the team. He's behind you. He's very shy. Or waste time going to him. Yeah. You might not have wanted to be on a camera. You gotta ask those things first. It's 2020, people are sensitive. So anyway, they got all the parts prepared for the drawers. We're doing a super basic pocket hole drawer assembly, bane of my existence, but we had budgetary restrictions on this guy. So we're gonna screw these together and then finish up this carcass with the back panel. Yeah, that should be it. Also, getting a lot of requests for the Ask Clownery t-shirt to be launched. If you want one, you need to tell me down below because if I don't get a ton of people wanting them, I'm not making them. So let me know. All right, let's build up. So because the back panel we're attaching to this is solid wood, it's gonna expand and contract this way, which means I need to create somewhere for that to happen. The way we built this is we actually created an expansion joint at this corner, and then this corner will be capped with the fake shotgun. 
So we need to make some slots for mounting our piece. And then we're gonna use knockdown joinery instead of using just regular screws to fasten this in. So it wouldn't be a John Malecki project if something involved in the project did not weigh in excess of 400 pounds. Hence this ridiculous concrete top. We were going to use GFRC. I didn't have enough time or materials to do so. So we went with the classic rendition of a concrete countertop. We're going to have to do some touch up. The first thing we got to do is demold. Pray for me. Smack a mold. Ugh, that's all that is back. We're out of the mold, it's looking decent. Mine is, I tried to use this Floetrol product. And what it does is it decreases the amount of water needed in the mixture. I ran out and then obviously only got it in this one spot. I knew I was gonna need a slurry coat. So we're gonna use the same stuff we use on the rock on the waterfall table. And hopefully I can get this color to be a little more uniform and fill in all these holes. We're gonna press fit this and then epoxy it in on site. Trying to keep this thing in parts so it can be lightweight to, to get it to the destination in Ohio. So we're gonna press fit this in on site. I wanted to bolt it from the inside, but then there was no way I could hide those fasteners. So we're gonna press fit it. In order to do so, I need it to be pretty much perfect with our mounting holes. So we're gonna mount some four inch rod, perfectly square off the back of this at these four corners. And then I'll take this and we should be able to find, use the same square as a template in order to mount our holes. Should work in theory. So what we did was we found the center line on our circle and then we're using the square centered on the center line in order to make sure everything's squared. So I got a mark here and a mark here. All in all, we should be freaking close. In theory, I should be able to take this same template, drill a hole, shove her in there. Now, we get to finish this thing. So we're gonna paint this sucker with some Montana gold. I tested the color, and we like it. It looks better without primer, in my opinion. It looks better with primer and Sam's. Sam went to school for photography and color grading and all kinds of bullshit. So we're gonna go with my opinion, because I went to school to play football and learn business. Neither of which I actually did. So one little unique thing I wanted to add to this project was using the shells from Winchester for the drawer pulls. But I don't want to keep them full of shot. So what we're going to do is empty these out and fill them with epoxy, I think it'll make a nice little touch. One comment I'm gonna get is about leaving the primer in there. It is just as safe to leave these sitting on a shelf with the primers in them, completely loaded with shot as it is, to unload the shot in the wad and leave the primer in them and then glue them to the drawer front. So I don't wanna hear your, your BS in the comments. Thank you. Now, let's cut these things open. So this is not the color we wanted it to be. I wanted it to be this color. I used the same color. Problem is I didn't use enough. So when it gets to using pigment, I guess there's a lot more that goes into it except for what it looks like in the bucket. Unfortunately, the scarlet is a little bit of a different chemical makeup than the deep blue that we've used in the past. We used the same ratio that we used on the deep blue for a 60 liter pour that we did for this 18 liter pour. And uh, yeah, it, it, it yeah. Didn't work. No. So I called Black Diamond Pigment. They were phenomenal. They coached me up. 
we're gonna pour uh, another like three and a half liters on top of this, bring that Keller up to what we want it to be. We're gonna use um, Total Boat's high performance resin for this pour. Uh, then we should be able to get the Keller we're looking for and it'll flatten and we should still hit our timeline, which is two days from now to get this thing done. Two, uh, let's get to another pour. Carcass is assembled. Before we put the drawers in, I want to get a coat of finish on it. So let us spray. So this is 10 inch PVC that just came from an order on the internet. You can get anything on the internet. And we need to cut it down. This is how we're gonna make our shotgun shells. We were originally gonna bend some, something to fit it. And then I realized I'm an idiot and that this would work better. Only problem is this was uber expensive. I think the safest way to do it is I'm gonna line it up on the fence and I'm gonna stand over here while somebody puts pressure on the other side and then just turn it in the opposite direction of the fence with a stop. This shit's about to get real squirrely. We are dry, which means we need to attempt to demold this. Pray for me. So, because this isn't a table, it's flat enough for what we're using it for. It may, might be off by 16th across. So we're gonna sand it, polish her up, and then I gotta figure out a way to mount it and backlight it. You know, just another day. So, now that the cabinet's finished, last things we need to do, get these drawers installed. I'm gonna be using these uh, drawer glide guide things that I've had for years, um, and a couple spacers, and it should go relatively easily. And then again, who the hell knows? So the shotgun shells are looking good. The paint laid really nice. I'm really glad because I sent Sam blindly to the store and he spent $100 a gallon, $100 on a gallon of paint, but it's looking good. So, the way we're gonna make these look like shotgun shells is I've got aluminum flashing, and we're just gonna epoxy it on. Pretty basic. So first thing we're gonna do is put the, uh, put the flashing on, and then we'll come back and we'll epoxy these down to the metal bottoms. All right, so to make this interesting, for the drawer pulls, we're gonna use a shotgun shell that I filled with resin. And we don't have a bit that's the outside dimension of the shell. So we gotta make these holes, and I, uh, I'm gonna use the CNC. This should work, in theory. It's only a pocket. Um, worst case, we completely ruined the drawer front, and uh, I gotta start over, even though this thing needs delivered tomorrow. So, let's go.
So our shotgun shells aren't fitting underneath the ledger because when I cut this section out, it actually shrunk, which is protruding my shell out past the edge of the board here. So I made a, a test piece and I'll be, we just gotta rip a little bit more out and these should fit pretty much perfectly where I want them to go. Now we just gotta figure out a way for me to cut three inches out of our already finished beautiful shells. Wouldn't be one of my projects if we weren't getting squirrely. So we just got to the facility where we're gonna be installing this thing. Pretty huge event. I guess it's like a family shooting thing. Kids, parents, all kinds of stuff. Lots of people here. We gotta unload the trailer and get this thing into the building. So this one turned out awesome. I say this every project, but I think this one might be my favorite now. If this is one of your favorites, let me know. Leave a comment down below. And if you guys wanna see another one of my gun projects, I got a whole playlist queued up for you right here. 